two men walk into the octagon, only one will walk out. Well, unless you count the referee, at the same time, unless big old melee happens, a lot more people be leaving the octagon. Hello, this is Octagon St. Laveau, and I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about MMA, UFC, uh, statistics facts, and novice fever, which is what I have, okay? So, it's been almost just about a year since my adventures into mixed martial arts and um, the UFC, all right? And I'm thinking that I just want to backtrack a little bit and talk about um, how it all began and how it happened. Not my feelings about per se, but the guys who got me started on this path of um, octagon fever, all right? So first off, from what I remember, in the beginning is that, of course, I had this earache. I had an eye infection. I'm writing a paper about Richard Nixon. I'm trying to relax. And I decide to do a little bit of history of boxing, or wrestling. I used to watch with my gramps. And then boom, boom, kapow. All of a sudden, I'm hearing Chael Son and Michael Rappaport go off about Ronda Rousey's fight. So it basically goes like this. That was one of the first conversations I ever heard about MMA. I also heard the Weasel's take on Ronda Rousey, Mixed Molly Wapri's uh, excellent uh, documentary on Rose Nunes, Nunes, Junis called The Journey, Mixed Ra Molly Wapri on Ronda Rousey, Alpaca the Source's great uh, uh, episodes on Tony Ferguson, one entitled The Hobbesian Nightmare, Al the Alpaca Thesaurus trilogy on Thug Rose and Joanna Yezesik, and Nate Diaz on the CM Punk contract, all right? And then I also got the glimpses of the legends of MMA, such as Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, Matt Hughes, Fidel. Fedor Elmineleko and Stepi Mikulkic. I was amazed by Chel Sun and, and Tony Ferguson's view and worldview on fighting. Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz, Dominic Cruz, Brian Ortega, and Mr. Guffeston crept up on me. All right, they're like, I finally like kind of know some after a minute. And then, um, Alpaca Thesaurus who is, he's my sensei on all things MMA. He gave me a nice shout out the other day on YouTube. He said that I wasn't a newbie anymore because I considered Kevin Gasolum the mature Mike Perry. Thank you, sensei, but I still have a long way to go. I'm always going to be a novice until I get a couple belts underneath me belts. You know what I'm talking about? All right, so Alpaca Thesaurus, Cranach, Nick Smalley Whoppery, Mind Smash Weasel, anything by Chael, Bad Guy Incorporated. And then we have the obvious champs of the Octagon, Conor McGregor, Jose Aldo, and Anderson Silva, who I have much respect for. I also have some fighters who are on the yawn side, such as TJ's Dillashaw, Henry Sejudo, Demetrius Johnson and Fabrizio Ferdum, but that's no fault of their own. These men are excellent fighters, all right? If I ever got a chance, if they ever asked me, do you want to train for Ottman? Of course I would, okay? But sometimes a fighter just can't translate his charisma to the screen like other fighters can. The sport is extremely subjective. It's so subjective that I've ceased to feel guilty about being subjective about it. There are fighters you root for, fighters you don't. I never can pick a winner. Um, I did actually know that Mike Perry was going to boom, boom, boom. Um, what's a man's name there? It'll come to me. I think I wrote it down. I knew that he was going to boom, boom him out, all right? but. That's only because I like Mr. Mike, and um, he keeps saying he's 2% black. He, Mike Perry, he's just a charming, all around, um, not afraid of a fight like Chael Sonnen. Uh, you can't help but root for the guy. And uh, he called out there until the, this last fight, and 
I think that that would be a great matchup. I love Darren Till. He's Liverpool's favorite son. Um, Darren can do no wrong. He just got, he's 26 years old. He just got arrested for stealing a taxi and um, uh, tearing up a hotel room. He's a young, young guy. He probably won't do it again. At any rate, it's guys like that in the UFC that make you interested in the matches. And that Demetrius Johnson, he's Mighty Mouse, yeah, right on rock. But, um, you know, he gets the mic and he's just like, yeah, I hope I fight a good fight. And uh, sometimes people want more meat on their bo that bone. And also on top of that, when you have teams, uh, like football teams, and you have, uh, uh, baseball teams, okay, those guys, they're all one big unit. You really, and there's a thousand of them, and so you really can't see, for someone like me, who you like. Race car drivers, one of the reasons why I love race car driving NASCAR is because um, it's individual, all right, it's the individual going for the individual, and I haven't watched NASCARs in, NASCAR in years, but I still, I still adore it. Uh, one of the reasons why I love mixed martial arts is because it's one-on-one. -on -one. Who is the best? And though it is brutal, I'm just glad these guys get paid for it. Back in Rome, the gladiator days, they didn't get paid for anything. They got killed. All right. So, uh, I do want to say that uh, even though it is a brutal sport, there are certain rules that one must adhere to within the octagon. There are three basic rules. Uh, there are five-minute rounds. There are three judges. Okay. There are three five-minute rounds. There are three judges. And during the championship belts, the rounds are five minutes. All right. The round winner is awarded 10 points, and the opponent is awarded nine points or less. All right. Striking, grappling, aggressiveness, and octagon control are key when it comes to uh, winning in the octagon, all right? So, a quick, quick review again about different weight classes. I think that this is good for all of us. They can be quite confusing. Heavyweight is at 265 pounds, 120 kilograms. Lightweight's at 205 pounds, 93 kilograms. Middleweight is 185, 84 kilograms. Welterweight is 175 pounds, 77 kilograms. Lightweight, 155 pounds, 70 kilograms. Bantamweight, 135 pounds, 61 kilograms. Flyweight is 125 pounds and 61 kilograms. Now we'll quickly go again over the women's weight classes. Women's featherweight, 145 pounds, 65 kilograms. Women's bantamweight, 135 pounds, 61 kilograms. Women's flyweight, 125 pounds, 56 kilograms. Women's strawweight, 115 pounds, 52, 52 kilograms. I'm a strawweight, I'd get pummeled, all right? I'm basically a strawweight. I'm 119. So um, at 115 women's strawweight, uh, I'd be a little bit on the skinny side. I'd probably be a little bit dehydrated as a fighter. Um, probably wouldn't do too well, uh, but I'd be really light on my feet. And then if I was a woman's flyweight at 125, it would mean I would have to bulk up a little bit, and I would be slower on my feet. That's just what I'm figuring out, studying uh, MMA. All right, so at one point, there's this great video called um, Trash Talk Different Divisions. And so you see someone like Michael Bisping giving Kel Colby Kel Covington hell via uh, the fact that um, Mike's interviewing him, all right? And then you'll see uh, Conor McGregor, who uh, lightweight, middle lightweight, lightweight, uh, talking about how Fabrice Silverdoom at that time, he was the heavyweight champ, uh, couldn't go to, couldn't do the match because he had a sore toe. The game, it's on his knees, said Connor. All right, so this is a great, 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 great video. Check it out. It only runs four or five minutes. So at one point, you have Mr. Tony Ferguson, El Kukui. I love him, all right? I love him like I love Chelsea Sonnen. 
and he and Fabrizio Berdun are talking the same interviewer, and uh, Fabrizio's heavyweight. And at one point, Mr. Tony goes, yeah, be quiet, and they start talking in, in either Spanish or Portuguese, I don't know, I think it's Spanish. And they're going back and forth until finally Tony go, they both get up and Tony is like half the height of Fabrizio, right? And so I'm like, damn. And so Mr. Tony goes, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. He goes, big guy, big guy. And Fabrizio's all mad. And Tony go, Tony sits down and goes, be quiet, I'll ankle pick you. So I was like, what the heck does ankle pick mean? I'm like, hmm, I looked it up. Kibuse geeshe. And it really does mean ankle pick. I think what happens is, is that, and I might be wrong, uh, the opponent grabs his opponent and literally lifts him up and throw, throws him down upside down. It's ankle pick. I thought he was being funny. You know, I didn't think it was real move, but I look that up. Kibusu geeshe. That's ankle pick. Okay, so um, I learned a couple facts. One or two of which is that watched a great documentary about mixed molly whoppery, and please, 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 please check him out. Okay, uh, oh, it might have been Mind Smash, but I'm might have been Mind Smash, but anyway, Mind Smash. Pardon me. All right. So B.J. Penn and Uriah Faber began the lightweight division. If not for them, featherweight would not have happened. There would have been no Aldo. No corner, no Dominic Cruz. Uriah knew when to retire, and he's respected by Dominic. So one of the reasons why I wrote that down is because I check out Uriah Faber, and Mix Molly Whoppery did this great video about the bantamweight division and how uh, Dominic Cruz, Kobe Graubrandt, uh, T.J. Dillashaw, and Uriah were all going at it in different ways, and. Uh, Uriah looked like a shorty to me. I mean, I'm short. He's short. And I was looking at him, looking at him, and then when I did this, uh, viewed the documentary, and I'm positive it's my smash now, Uriah is a small guy in a field of big guys, but through his tenacity and his smarts, he is well respected by all. Um, he's retired now. You can catch his fights on YouTube. He's a great fighter. Um, I think I like uh, people a little bit more dramatic as fighting, but I've never really watched an entire fight of Uriah, so I can't judge him. I have to be honest with that, but I'm going to check him out in the future. Okay, so uh, I think that, let's see, we'll, um, we'll, finish with, again, rankings pound for pound, different weight classes, all right? Uh, Chris Cyborg is number 15. This is as of April of this year, I hope. I'm pretty sure, okay? So at 15, we have Chris Cyborg. At 14, we have Rose Namajunas. At 13, we have Tyrone Woodley. At 12, we have Tony Ferguson. At 11, we have Robert Whitaker. At 10, we have Stepi Mikovic. At 9, we've got Conor McGregor. At 8, we've got Kim, Kim Usman. At 7, we've got TJ Dillashaw. At 6, Amanda Nunes. At 5, Henry Sejudo. At 4, Max Holloway. At 3, Khabib Namagedov. At 2, John Jones. And number 1 is Daniel Cormier. By the time that we do another episode here, these rankings might have changed, and I will uh, revise and review it. So, uh, basically, please, please, please just check out um, Alpaca Thesaurus. Check out Mr. Mix Molly Whoppery. Uh, support Mr. Mix Molly Whoppery over on Patreon. And uh, Krenak, Mind Smash, Weasel, especially Weasel. Weasel's breakdowns are to die for. I'm, I'm trying to listen to Weasel to learn about my breakdowns. I listened to Mr. Uh, Korb there on Alpaca Thesaurus to study body language and sociology and psychology. 
Okay, so I think that that's just about it for me today. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. You've been watching Octagon St. Laveau here at Walker. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. Uh, there's going to be some great fights coming up. My man, Chael Sonnen, is taking on Mashida Liotto. Oh, pardon me, Liotto Mashida. Pardon. I'm going to learn those names really well. Who is actually related to Chris Cyborg, the one of the most stunning legends in women's MMA history. Until next time, darlings, love one another, peace out, and take care. Bye-bye.